Welcome back, my name is Kerry, and today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to think about before buying a piece of raw land for a new home. Buying raw land can be a great way to get the home of your dreams, but it's also easy to find yourself in over your head because there's a lot to think about and costs can add up extremely fast. Right now, I'm about 10 days away from having our lot ready for a 1,560 square foot home, so it seems like the perfect time to show you everything involved in getting to this point. What I'm gonna do is show you everything we've done, the current state of the lot, and what still has to happen before we end up with a move-in ready home, so let's do it. After we purchased the lot, the first thing we did was clear it and remove trees. At this step in the process, I posted a video and there was a few comments that maybe we should have kept a few more trees, but this lot doesn't have access to city sewer, so we needed to make room for a septic field. If there was access to city sewer, maybe we would have kept a few more trees, but for our requirements, it just made sense to clear it. After we cleared it, we brought in some extra fill to level it out. When we got it, there was a fairly big drop down from the road and then the lot continued sloping from front to back and there really wasn't a good spot for the home. So what we did is we brought in some extra fill and now we've got a nice flat spot for the house and just the entire lot is a lot more usable. Even though we don't have access to city sewer, luckily we do have access to city water. However, it wasn't run to the property before we bought it. The water service had to be run across the street through a ditch and onto our property, which is way better than having to drill a well, so that's a bonus. However, there is still a cost to it. Where I live, you have to use the city crew to bring the water service to the edge of the property line, so even though I think it's a better option, it's still fairly expensive. Bringing the water service onto the property was over $10,000, but who wants a home without water? So yes, a bit of a kick in the pants, but definitely something that had to be done. While all that was going on, we were working with BC Hydro to get power for the house. That required us to buy a power pole and place it on the property so that they could run from their lines onto our pole. From that pole, we dig a trench to the home site for the tech cable. So even though the power is coming onto the property overhead, it will be underground to the house. This is the most common way to get power to the home. Once in a while, you'll see the power come overhead to the pole and then go overhead to a mast on the side of the house. I like to go underground, it's just a much cleaner look for the exterior of the home. While we're on utilities, I have had a few people asking about a gas line onto the property. In my area, you have to have the home built before they'll run the gas line in, so that will come a little bit down the road. The last thing we did was have a septic system installed because even though the property is in town, it doesn't have access to city sewer. This system was designed by an engineer and consists of a septic tank, a pump chamber, and a sand mound. Basically how this system works is all of the stuff flows into the septic tank. When the septic tank gets to a certain level, the liquids flow over into the pump chamber. The effluent in the pump chamber is then periodically pumped out to the sand mound where it is rotated between four different pipes and drains back into the ground. Because the soil in the sand mound receives the effluent evenly and over set intervals, it is much less likely to become overly wet than a traditional system. It's recommended that the septic tank and pump chamber be pumped out every three to five years, but that exact time frame is gonna depend on how many people actually end up living in the house. If it's a home for one person, they might be closer to the five year mark. However, if it's a family of five, six or more, they might wanna start thinking about pumping it really close to the three year mark. It's also recommended that some type of vegetation is maintained over the mound to maximize uptake and prevent erosion. However, planting trees or shrubs on or near the drain field is a big no-no because their root systems have a chance of clogging the pipes, which is exactly why we decided to take out all but a few trees. My plan is to plant grass over the mound. It'll help with uptake, prevent erosion, and I think it'll look good too. Finally, we created a spot where the home will actually go, and this is what needs to be finished in the next 10 days so we can get our new home out here. At this point, all we're waiting for is the sewer drops, the septic tank, the trench to be run for the tech cable, and the water to be run from the city access to the home site. So let's go check it out. We have arrived and there's definitely some changes to report. Let's go check it out. All right, so this is where I was telling you we've got the power pole on our property, which you can see they have run the conduit through this trench over to where the home will sit. Now, I did say that the pad was done. The pad is a bit of a mess from digging in all of this stuff here. So they're gonna work on that tomorrow. I just talked to the guy from Mounts Construction and they're gonna fix that up tomorrow. So here is where the tech cable comes out. That's a 200 amp service, which is lots of power for a shop. Now, we've also got the sewer drop here 
That's the other thing we were waiting for. So that pretty much gives us a green light to form the pad and pour the concrete. Let's check out the septic tank. So it comes off the pad. Here you can see the 1000 gallon septic tank right there, which flows over into the pump tank. And from there, it gets shot up over to the field. This is a cool system. It automatically rotates between one of these four pipes. So every time it gets shot up here, it's gonna to go to a different pipe. Let's have a closer look. This isn't connected yet and it still needs to be buried, but this is a good chance for us to just look at what is actually underneath the sand mound. So this is where I was talking. I'm gonna be planting grass to help with the uptake. This is what is actually underneath the mound. Kind of a cool system. So there is still a bit to do before we bring the house out here. Mainly we need to get that concrete pad poured because ideally we want that to sit for around 10 days before you put a full house on there. That just gives it enough time to fully dry and you don't have to worry about it cracking under the weight of the house. One last look at the home location before they come in, fix it up and we form the pad. Next time you see this, you'll be looking at concrete. Now we gotta start thinking about the house itself. We can't just move a full house in here. It's gonna come in two pieces. So let's go look at what exactly has to be done at the house before we can actually move it. If you've been following along with this process, you might already know that the house we're moving out to that property is the one we currently use as an office. So if you've watched any of my videos, that's where I do the videos. We've got a new office, so we're moving this one to put it up for sale as a house. It's no longer an office, it's gonna be a house. But before we can do that, we have to take this house apart. So you can see right now it is in one piece, but to travel down the road, it has to come apart. So we're gonna get the setup crew in probably next week. They're gonna split it right down the middle and then that'll be a width that it can legally travel down the road. We'll take it out there, we'll set it back up and then it'll be time to put it for sale. So as far as next steps go, what we have to do is get this house apart and get it ready for shipping. That means take the skirting off, take the steps off, disconnect the services, and then line up a trucking company to take it across town for us, at which point we'll be ready to set it back up. When buying a piece of raw land for any type of home, there is a lot to think about. And if any of the steps are missed, the entire budget can be thrown off very quickly. I did an entire video breaking down my budget for this project. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link up near the top of the screen. If you're considering buying land, I hope this video helped give you an idea exactly what's involved from taking it from the very beginning to the point it's actually ready for a new home. From here, the fun really begins and we get to see this property finally take shape. That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.